mean, one of the things that I do before I'll start any paper using design-based research is I'll write my methods, I'll write my intro and my methods first. Uh -huh. um, by defining the methods before I kind of go after the data, I can say, okay, if we move this, can we do this, first of all? Is this a reasonable take? We have these, you know, 10,000 videos, yeah. <laughs> pages and all that. We're not going to have time to call through it, right? Um, so what would be a process that would allow us to more kind of usefully do that? And what we've done is we've said, okay, we do two things. One is, as we're initially coding the data or collecting the data, we do certain things to tag it at certain points such that um, our interpretation goes along with the data collection. And there's certain pieces that we say, these are telling a, a really interesting story. So at the end, we have 10,000 pieces of data and we have 23 that are all already tagged with an interpretation associated. But if that's all we did, we'd get into Shavelson's critiques and even Ann Brown's critiques of other people of her own work, right? Mm -hmm. So, but, but I do think that just because that's a critique that, you know, we kind of opportunistically grab at certain data that makes our point and, and, and it's a very small subset, I don't think that we should stop doing that because I think that when we're in the mix, when we're in the middle of the system, we tend to be most aware of some of the most useful happenings and walkaways that are going on, mm -hmm. especially if we're steeped in the literature because we can be relating what we're seeing to things that people are talking about is problematic. The other part of it is then, and additionally in writing that method section, I say, so part of what we do is we do that. The other part of what we do is we then try to get the data into a space such that we could randomly grab at pieces. So we have this other part of the process that's not so kind of opportunistically and purposefully sampled, but that we randomly grab large numbers from the rest of the data. And so what we do then with those other pieces of, of, of data is say, what is the story they're telling? These are ones that we didn't jump into. And then we, we try to mesh the two, or we can report them side to side. So I think that one thing that, that design-based researchers need to do is they need to do a mix of opportunistic and um, more, you know, mythologically, or I, I think they're both mythologically rigorous, more um, kind of randomized um, sampling from their data. Mm -hmm. And so I think you need to do both, but I think if we just went to the randomized sampling m part of it, we would lose a lot of the richness that we can capture because we're immersed in the mm -hmm. system and so we see things um, and we're sensitized to certain issues while it's going on. Mm -hmm. So I would argue, for, for my first answer to your question mm -hmm. is that's how I try to balance those. In terms of then making the arguments to people like Shavelson, um, you know, I think that at some level, it requires a collaboration. So I, I do bring in other people who aren't on the inside. So like Dan Hickey has been mm -hmm. a, 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 uh, working with us to develop the assessment items and to think mm -hmm. about the relationship between keeping those non-contaminated from our design work such that we do have those skeptic claim things. So there's kind of a sell out there to the traditional notions. But additionally, um, in, in addition to that, how do I can visit Shavelson? How do I convince Shavelson? I think part of it is, you know, at some level, we're asking different questions, and, and, and we just come to fundamental different viewpoints. And so, at some level, I have to really kind of make sure I'm doing what I know is useful, and I'm doing it right. And hypothetically, so the first one um, is a way of balancing his and my goals. You know, that kind of sampling as we go as well as kind of randomized sampling at the end mm -hmm. or grabbing opportunistically as we go. The second one of bringing an external kind of evaluator or assessment person on as part of the project is another way of kind of speaking to Shavelson's needs to show here's the, you know, here's the beef. The third thing I need to do is just to say, okay, what, I mean, we have to remember that social sciences, I mean, all science, if you look at Bruno Latour, the sociology of sciences, is at some level um, kind of socially agreed upon truths with, mm -hmm. you know, with, a, with a lower case T. Mm -hmm. And so all science involves this kind of convincing my colleagues and truths are made over time. So I, I, I think that for me, I don't think I know for me, I have to come to terms with what for me is methodologically useful, what is creating the kind of claims I want, and I have to stand behind and make sure I'm doing those well. And I'm articulating my assumptions and why. And my belief is if I can do that well enough and enough people can see the value of what I'm doing, um, people like Shavelson will have to look at the merit in what's going on there. I mean, just the fact that he's enlisting Bruner's, you know, ideas, even if he's dismissing them, 
brings them to the table as you, worthy of discussion. Mm -hmm. So I think at some level, while there is this process of trying to kind of appeal to, um, not in a selling out way, but in, in, in a way of acknowledging this is part of how truths are made in our society, mm -hmm. I need to also understand what I believe and, and what, methodolo what methodological steps and claims I feel um, I can stand behind and are what I believe. So I don't want, I guess what I'm trying to say to you is I do think you need to acknowledge these concerns. At the same time, I think I need to figure out what is, how do I get about the truths that I most care about? Mm -hmm. I need to continue to tell those stories because those are the kind of things that I'm going to wake up in the morning and go, yeah, this is why I'm doing this. These are the kind of mm -hmm. impacts I want to have. And if I just simply try to mold my thinking, my ideas, my stories to, um, you know, another person's um, claims of what is true, I'm never going to find my heart in my work and that would, you know, that would be the worst thing I could ever do.